by saying then ultimately the end point of life is a returning back to the earth itself. And of course there are philosophical issues that this implies. But I think what is more interesting is how the death instinct is expressed. We saw earlier that the love instinct is expressed in many different ways. So is the death instinct. Let's look at some of the consequences. The death instinct expresses itself in terms of hate. That's an expression of death. When you hate somebody, you also often want to do what? You want to kill them. You want to destroy them, hurt them, make them feel pain. So death comes through you onto the other individual. You say resentment is a death, is an expression of the death instinct. Hostility, hostile aggression, retarding other people's growth and development. What we call disenhancement, just as love leads to enhancement, hatred leads to disenhancement, disenchantment. Just as love leads to harmony, hatred leads to disharmony. Just as love then leads to growth by the person you're dealing with, hate leads to restriction, holding them back. We, of course, as people have been the victim of hatred. And hatred has locked us into ghettos and locked us into poor schooling and locked us into all kinds of corners and ghettos of all types. Uh, it, hatred then brings about ultimately the death and destruction of other people. We must recognize that the world is a perfect place. And I've often said, though, that means you don't confuse perfection with good. I didn't say it was necessarily a good place. Perfection and goodness are not one and the same thing. You can be perfectly evil as well as perfectly good. Perfection has to do with the precision of a, of a thing, the precision of relations the lawfulness between a cause and an effect. It talks about then, when you talk about perfection, you're saying surely this thing is always followed by that thing. Now then, the point I'm trying to get at here then is this. If you have hate in your heart, if you have resentment in your heart, if you have anger and fear in your heart, and, and hostility in your heart. The law of perfection says you are going to create a world that is destructive. You cannot have these emotions in yourself and not produce a destructive kind of world. This of course was what Jesus was talking about when he talked about the gospel. Gospel implying what? Good news. When he talks about love thy neighbor as thyself. Greet your enemy with what? Love. Because it is, love what? God before all else. Be filled with the love of God. And to be filled with God is to be filled with love. And therefore a nation of godly people is not a nation that is racist. Is not a nation that kills and destroys the earth and kills and destroys its people. You cannot have war, death, and destruction where true and righteous love exists between people. And what Christ was trying to get at then was this. If we could come to love others as we love ourselves, if we could come and notice it says, as ourselves, which means we love ourselves as well, and it is through the process of loving oneself deeply that we love other people deeply as well. Out of that then becomes a world filled with love, and the kingdom of God comes to earth itself. In a world though filled with hate and resentment and anger, you're going to get a world then filled with war, murder, death, suicide, robbery, rape, violence and all the kinds of things we talk we see so much about in the everyday news. This is one reason why you know that this nation is not a Christian nation. You got people who go to church. The Christian so-called religion is the predominant religion, 
but the people are not filled with Christianity by any stretch of the imagination, ladies and gentlemen. If this country was a true Christian country, we wouldn't even be here talking about black men and black women love and all that kind of thing, would we? We wouldn't even be talking about our problems as a what? As a race and as a people. Because that kind of problem would not exist with people who truly love and had the love of God within them. But it is because we don't have that love that we have the kinds of problems we have today. This is why ultimately Jesus and the other prophets can predict the end of the world as being one of death and war because ultimately people filled with love and egotism and false pride and the other kinds of things are going to bring war and death upon themselves. And this is of course is what we see today. Reagan has no love, no righteous love. Gorbachev has no righteous love. People with righteous love cannot make guns and weapons that threaten to destroy the whole of the human race. Out, these weapons come out of what? Hate, fear, anger, pride, resentment, and the other kinds of things. So then, when we express hatred and hostility, we are expressing the hate instinct. And when you see then that death instinct, the hate instinct being expressed, you see then ultimately it leads to the destruction of something. It can lead to the destruction of the buildings you live in. You hate the landlord. You hate the people who live in it. You hate yourself, and then you destroy the buildings around you, de destroy the people around you. Anything that gets next, gets your neighbor's goat, you do. You like to see them upset. You like to uh, blow their cool. You like to do things to them out of this instinct. Well, some of us can take hate that is expressed against our enemies. So, hey, they deserve whatever they get, right? And they deserve death, or they deserve the pain that we put on them. But you know, there's one thing peculiar about the hate instinct and the death instinct. It's, it's, it's no respecter of persons. Your own death instinct can turn around against you as an individual. You not only can hate other people, but you can what? Hate yourself. And that hatred that destroys other people, that pains other people, that kills other people, that same hatred when it's curved around toward you, it's not going to stop doing it, is it? It's going to do the same thing to you. It's going to turn right back around into self-destruction, suicide. In some, in, in, in some instances we say the person that commits suicide is the individual who really wanted to kill somebody else. But for some reason, they lacked the, the courage, or they didn't quite know who they wanted to kill, or what have you, and ultimately they turned then that instinct upon themselves. Uh, hate then leads to self-alienation and self-destruction. It leads to depression. Le you know, when you're depressed, you talk about yourself. I'm no good. I'm a low so-and-so. -and -so. I don't deserve to live. I'm worthless. The same kind of thing that you tell another person when you hate them. You're low. You're this. You're a dirty dog. So forth. When you're in depression, often you'll do what? Turn it right back around on yourself. Uh, I don't deserve to live. When you tell the, when you hate somebody, you say, you don't deserve to live. I'm going to kill you. Often then, when you're into self-hatred, you tell yourself the same thing. I hate myself. I don't deserve it. I could just die. I wish I would die. And often people will proceed to die and to kill themselves. It leads then to descendants, where the love instinct leads to transcendence and moving beyond the self. Often then the hate instinct moves to descendants and going into oneself to decadence. Hatred leads, it has its euphoria, but it's an unnatural euphoria. That is, you're going to get your kicks not from, from self-love and the loving of others, but from trying to deal with your own self-hatred, trying to escape your own self-hatred. You can only feel good when you've hurt somebody. You can only feel good when you've slandered someone, when you cut someone down, embarrassed them, uh, conquered them, beat them in some kind of way. So you have some people, they, they, they get a euphoria from hate, 
but it is a euphoria that leads either to the destruction of themselves or the destruction of someone else. Or in dealing with that euphoria, then they have to go into drugs and alcohols and the other kinds of things uh, as a way of getting a good feeling one way or the other.